Welcome to the Protector Culture Podcast with Jimmy Graham. Jimmy is a veteran U.S. Navy SEAL, a former protective officer for the CIA Global Response Staff, founder and CEO of the Abel Shepherd Program, a husband and father of four, and a personal friend of mine. Now here's Jimmy. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Protector Culture Podcast with Jimmy Graham. I am your host, Jimmy Graham. So we are trying something new outside today. Beautiful day in Colorado. BK got challenged once again to set us up at a brand new location. I'm going to be walking off set. He's going to have to follow me to the camera later. So he has never once failed us and he keeps rising. I'm making you better. You should be That's thanking true. me for this. It's true. <laughs> Joining me today is Parker Man, Sir Abel Shepard, 019. What's up, brother? How's it going? I'm good. I'm good. Neil Pink, I'm Abel Shepard 014. How are you, sir? Peace, brother. <laughs> Peace. <laughs> Joy be with you. And Skip Miller, Abel Shepard 004. What's happening, brother? How's it going, sir? I'm good. Awesome. We're, uh, we're calling this one Gear Review uh, July 2020. Uh, once again, we're in a, in a space where people are coming to us uh, asking about products, asking about training, questions about ammunition shortages, questions about gear. Um, we've got some new products that we're going to be talking about, things that um, – this is one of the cool things, I think, about this job and kind of what we do is that uh, we are all constantly just messing with this stuff. I love um, – uh, R&D, research and development, advancing stuff, test and evaluate, whatever you want to call it. Um, so I love this stuff. I love finding stuff, uh, proving it out, and then bringing it to other people. Uh, I know you guys do too. Yep. It is really a, kind of a, a perk or benefit of this job. So we've each kind of identified a couple of things we want to talk about, and then we'll just, uh, anything comes up that you think about along the way, and we'll um, add what we can along yep. the way. What you got, Parker? What you, let's go one. All right. Well, uh, the first one we'll talk about is the uh, the Atlas boots from Five Eleven. There's a different few different versions of them, uh, low to I think up to eight inch uh, tall boots. They are pretty breathable as far as you know moving around in, in hot versus cold or anything like that. There's a, a couple of different soles that are in them. So the first one is this guy, and uh, it's called Ortholite, you know, foam. It's pretty thick foam, pretty comfortable. And then uh, underneath of that, they've got a uh, a piece and I can't remember exactly what it's called but it's uh, this system that puts another additional piece of sole in here that makes it more rigid so if you're loading out on high packs or heavy packs and, and going long distances it keeps that uh, form to your foot and it keeps your boot from bending as you're going through moving with a bunch of different weight to try to uh, stabilize you as you're moving uh, these can be removed you can put the regular foam sole right back in and it's a little bit more of a maybe a running shoe or something a little bit lighter that your feet, your foot, can, your foot can move around and kind of bend a little bit more, kind of how it is. The Atlas All Terrain Load Assistance System. Uh, so all the upper piece is going to be all breathable mesh, and then it's got a pretty uh, rugged sole on the bottom of it in order to be able to have a good grip walking off road or walking in the in the woods or something that you're doing versus just something's really slick and then you will you know kind of slip on rocks. I've, Worked in a little bit of water, not some mossy rocks where they're slippery on everything. A little bit of water, they worked really, really well. I wore mine through three weeks of New Zealand, hiking, going into town. That is pretty much what I wore the entire time I was there. I loved them, wouldn't trade them in for anything. Feet stayed nice and cool. I wear a wool sock most of the time anyway. I was using the uh, ones we talked about before, the, uh, what were those? Uh, Darn tough. The darn tough darn socks. Tough, yeah. uh, so so feet stayed pretty cool with wool socks on, wicking the moisture away. And then uh, also uh, keeping things uh, dry and and cool. Through three weeks of hiking through the wilderness in New Zealand, waterfalls and moisture and everything like that, they didn't fail me once. I left the hard sole on the inside, and I was really happy with it. Got into a couple of... Uh, real maneuverable spots and my feet didn't want to bend or kind of torque in the middle and then get that like ball to your foot or the arch of your foot to kind of twist a bit because of this rigid system that they have in here. Uh, so I was really, really happy with them. Awesome. We've been talking more and more. I know we did the uh, Camino de Santiago, uh, you know, podcast episode and we were talking about trying to find, and this falls in line with that. Parker tried these first. I got a pair of these, it's actually mine. And um, um, I was going in looking for the cross trainer, but the cross trainer is only in black right now. 
I didn't okay. realize that. So he's like, I'm not sure. Why. I was just talking to Mike over 511. And he's, uh, I'm not sure why they did that. They're probably coming up because it is the coyote. Uh, the coyote brown is the most popular color. For whatever reason, the cross trainer just came in black. So that would be the the low cut one. Um, I do like these. Uh, you know, you guys, did, did we pass that video around about that lady cop getting overwhelmed in that fight? Oh, yeah. And the dude comes in and just, the, the, the backup comes in, assesses for about half a second and boots that dude in the face and his shoe goes flying shoe off. Goes and I'm off. like, hey, brother, you might want to go with at least with a mid. Keep you, I'm coming in your house slippers, man. Come to get right. some. Uh, but after, you know, several instances where you're going to want to keep your shoes on if things get a little bit, whatever, you know, you get that. Even now, uh, my, my kids now understand what a flat tire is. Oh, yeah. walking. And so, like, ah. Accidentally, the two-year-old flat tired uh, Sarah the other day. She's like, really? <laughs> Stepped on the back of her shoe and it came <laughs> off and all that. But yeah, with at least a mid, it's going to help your uh, your shoes stay on. Um, I hope that they improve the sole a little bit and just, you know, all honesty, you know, I love 511 products, but in their boots, I got the Jungle 3.0 Speed, did a five mile run and chunks were hanging off the boot. Like it was in rocks, it was in sand, it was in dirt, and it kind of chewed it up a little bit. I still wear them to teach and all that, but it's just that wasn't the, whatever the composition of like a- Lugs were kind of coming off? On the outside, it's a different boot than that. It's not okay. that one, but the other lugs on the outside were like kind of coming off. So I pulled those suckers off and, uh, Anyways, I want to try these guys because, like you, like cotton jacks up my feet for whatever reason. So wool socks, the darn time. After we did that podcast, right. I've, I don't know how many I have right now, but they are <laughs> unbelievable. So I don't know. The darn tough socks and the darn soft Duluth underwear. Oh. I'm telling you. Like, we tried the Buck <laughs> Nagy. You're like, hey, try these. We've been trying them. And they're good. But then when I was there, they are like, but new, the darn soft whatever. And I'm like, ah, maybe later. Went home, thought about it more, and I was like, I'm gonna go get, so I got two pair and they're fantastic. Awesome. So I'm, we're probably done at the uh, Darn Stuff Socks. Mm -hmm. and, and I just bought one pair. Do you go with like the full padded, I got the military boot one, whatever that is, the yep. mid-high, yeah. and the full cushion. I do the, the, I think it's the full hiking, the cushion one that's the yeah. hiker height. Yeah. That works. That works really they well. They got a light hiker with less cushion yeah, in it. I have the other one. I may try that. Those are sweet because even in the summer, I'm wearing wool socks. Yep. Typically, yeah. You know, yeah. If I, if it's, I kind of didn't like the full cushion as much for the summertime yeah. or as much all the time. It feels like my foot wants to slip around a little bit more mm. just because of how thick that cushion is. Maybe with something where you're on your feet a lot more, yeah. have something that's a little bit less. Obviously, it's that darn tough, so it's not going to fall apart on you, even being less. But then maybe it's not as much slipping, trying to create some of that that blisters or, or whatever. Yeah, absolutely. One of my friends listened to the podcast, the first one where we did the equipment one, and said, uh, it's a little scary how much you guys like Scott socks. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy how it's not a thing until it's a thing. Yeah, and it's like, yeah. my life is better now. Yeah, you know correct, it's like, I didn't correct. know it was bad. I was just happy to be an yeah. American free on the earth. And then you introduced me to these stinking socks. And, and I'm like, socks. what have I been doing for the past? <laughs> <laughs> and these underwear, we're all. I remember calling Parker. How weird was that? What kind of underwear you wear? You're like yeah. ah, Hanes, and I'm like, dude, you're so like '80s, freaking risky business, sliding across the <laughs> floor in your socks. High school. Right. It was <laughs> With that music playing. That's right. right. Um, so the uh, that insert, I'm really excited about that because they they talk about that load transfer system or whatever they call it, the Atlas system, and we've been doing, as you guys know, the Daddy Boot Camp. Mm -hmm. So Daddy Boot on Tuesdays and Thursdays, I've got my kids over at the park. We'll do a little warm up. We'll do some exercises and all that kind of stuff. So little runs and you know whatever lunges, and then we'll uh, I'll go get my pack. It's around about twenty to thirty pounds. I've added it up to forty, uh, doing the stairs. You know, there's two hundred stairs. There's a trail down. There's a big hiking trail and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and I've been uh, you know obviously looking for what's going to be the right uh, fit for that uh, Camino walk for thirty five days hiking. You know it's going to be five years, but then in two years we're going to be out there kind of testing it all out. So I like the idea about that with a light pack. And they're not claiming to be some kind of big, heavy, you know, 120 pound pack or anything. But uh, I'm trying to dial in that under 20 pounds, maybe a 15 pound pack. And what's the right boot that's not going to cause a problem mm -hmm. in a suit, uh, uh, sock and boot uh, combo. One kind of benefit to the, the two different soles, the, the rigid one and then the, the ortholite, the soft one. I kind of noticed I've done some events where I've been on my feet for, you know, 13, 15 miles a day, you know, moving yeah. back and forth inside a facility. You get out get done with that and we want to go out and grab some dinner or something, I just want to put on a different pair of shoes. Just yeah. something that I wasn't wearing all day yeah. or maybe something I wasn't wearing yesterday and I want to try something new means you could kind of play with these around a little bit. Walk for a day and just the sole, put the hard one underneath and it might benefit you from being feeling like I was had a hot spot with that one I'll take it away and then put it back Changes when I need a little bit that, more yeah, kind of like putting on a different shoe or a brand new shoe <laughs> and it kind of feels nice after you've been in one set all day long 
I haven't tried it yet, but that could be something to look at too. The um, when we're talking like light, you know, breathable stuff and all that, um, it's it's amazing what they've come up with. But like I've, I've had some work boots, like Red Wing boots mm-hmm. and stuff like that, were unbelievable when I was with the railroad. You know, working all day every day in a steel toe boot, they're phenomenal. Pick them. What have you? In construction and all that. Did you ever find one that was? Danners have always not fit me exactly right. They're they're amazing boots, Big. but they just I couldn't find the right fit for me. So typically I would go with something else. What do you got? Well, typically I was sitting behind the desk, <laughs> <laughs> so Flip-flops. I was trying to find a particularly soft pair of shoes. <laughs> you know, like super <laughs> soft shoes. They're like, "Hey, this is steel toe boot area." You're like, "Oh, I was like, I'll get my brand new ones from the desk." But on those days I went out, they were totally underrated for what I was doing. <laughs> <laughs> Have you guys ever heard of Kenetrek boots? Sure. Have you? Oh yeah. I, I, so I was just up in uh, in Montana. Montana this past weekend, and they're like, "How do you not know about this?" Like the guys that are hunting and hiking and doing all that up in Montana, you know, most of those guys, they're like, "This is the boot, and you're going to buy one pair." So j- much like Duluth, much like the uh, the socks, uh, darn tough, that you're they're lifetime. So you'll send them in, they'll resole them, they'll do whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, they even have a tactical boot, you know, that, that protective edge comes all the way up, all the way around it. They look a bit heavier, but they're made for the mountains. Yeah. So I didn't want to pull the trigger on $400, $500 pair of boots just then, but yep. they, they uh, I think Italian made leather. Yep. No, I, yeah, I, have a, I have a set. They, do you? Yeah, yeah, I bought them, la- I think, uh, might be two years ago, might have been, no, it was last year, and I, uh, for hunting. Yeah. yeah, so I have bought a pair of insulated can of trucks. They're fantastic. Are they? Everything. Yeah, and it's like as stiff as they are, it's crazy how uh, comfortable they are. Yeah. Because it is a stiff, stiff boot. Crazy stiff. And But it, it, the now rocker that, that the rocker's be, perfect. It just, like, you can still walk with it really well. That is well. a heavyweight, yes. loaded yes. mountain, the Rocky yeah. Mountains. Yeah, like you're, yeah, when you're going over, trying to track an elk, in the mountains, you you, That's you don't awesome. get a choice on where you're like yeah. put your feet. So you got to be really stiff, and they're fantastic for that. And and I've heard put them on and go hunt. Yeah, true yeah. story. Like yeah. no break in period, yep. you put them on and take off. Yeah, yeah, uh, fantastic. I think I, I think awesome. I think I bought them last year, and I I wore them literally once here at night, and I was role playing. Yeah. And so I, I wore them once in here, wore them all day, never thought about them, yeah. and then the next time I put them on was on a cold, snowy, windy day up in northwest corner of Colorado <laughs> and, and no blisters nothing they're, they're really cool boots wow yeah. if I'd have had a little more time in Bozeman I probably would have stopped in yep Kenetrek I think is based out of Bozeman uh, yeah. so that was a blessing in disguise <laughs> keep on my keep didn't going. have time keep, Just keep on keep moving. driving keep <laughs> on alright skip buy. skip what do you got alright <laughs> um yeah, uh, so we're on the boot topic so I might as well we sure. might as well finish that um so <clears throat> a buddy of mine talked to me about uh go ruck they make, you know, they, they run events. They run those rucking events and, and backpack, uh, and they run, make some good backpacks for that, rucksacks. Um, but they came out. Uh, Do you know much about, uh, can you spend a minute on that? Because sure. as I understand, it's uh, a couple of special forces guys, yep. business guy, they, they teamed up. Yep. And then they just basically give some kind of like lo- like light load bearing events. Yes. More of like a fitness yeah. and a cool kind yeah, of. Yeah, it's like they, they do, they, they, they have different classifications of, uh, and uh, different lengths. Uh, so, and, and sometimes I mean they do thirty hour events, oh, wow. and so like you're moving with a pack the whole time. It's you know predominantly rucking, but then you'll have like special events sprinkled throughout the course yeah. that you'll have to do uh, teamwork stuff. And yeah, there are uh, some special forces guys, army special forces guys that um, never really were super happy with the rucks that they were using when they yeah. were when they were serving. So they kind of did that. They're 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 it's a they're pricey uh, rocks, but a buddy, a, a bunch of my uh, friends have them, and they're just bombproof. And they use them for like travel packs. They use them for their everyday carry, and they use them to to travel with. Yeah. So they're getting hammered in the in the airports and stuff, and they just last. And then about I don't know if it was a year ago, maybe eighteen months ago, they came out with this boot, and um, a cut. They designed it to be after the old green jungle boots. And so, yes, I am that old, and so that's what I, I, have, <laughs> I, I, I don't think I have a pair left, but that was 25 years ago, um, ish. Shut up. And so, uh, so plus or minus 20. Uh, that's right. That's right. Plus or minus a couple. But uh, totally, absolutely caught that in t- that boot, and that boot is designed to be you know using the jungle as you know, wet, 
dry, you get off. They're absolutely not waterproof. They're supposed to actually, you know, let the, they're supposed to be so breathable that they couldn't be waterproof. Yeah. And uh, that's exactly what these boots are. Um, that's called the, uh, what is it? What Mac, it? V Mac, v, Mac V1, I think. I think that's right. And um, they have like grommets in the, in the instep to let the, squish out the water. It's always yeah. a little bit weird when you walk through the river and then you're squishing out, <laughs> pumping out water out of it. But um, I literally had them on my feet every day for the last, I want to say, at least six weeks. Uh, and you know, like how physical we are here, you know, in, when we're role playing. And, and, yeah. and, um, and they're really super lightweight, but they just breathe so well. Um, I've been super happy with them. And again, kind of like put them on, go, go do your, yeah. go live. And, uh, and then just get more and more comfortable. But they, they, they updated that design um, and, and put it with more modern materials and the soles a little bit different. And, but, man, they're just so comfortable. I think one of the most comfortable boots in the, in the uh, inventory as far as uh, the military was the desert boot. Yep. And it looks, the top looks yep. just like a desert boot with it, those grommets it, and everything. Yep. But that had a rock solid sole, you know, obviously to accommodate rocks and yep. all that kind of stuff. But it, I remember, you know, wearing my desert boots with jeans around town all the time. Mm -hmm. My buddy Scotty, you know, these you guys know. Same thing. Uh, but like jungle boots just, uh, I mean, they were one of the best boots then, you know, whatever. Then they came out like us with Bates and other companies came out with that kind of a uh, sneaker sole yep and boy did it piss off the older guy because they're <laughs> oh, like yeah. that's crap man that's not buds and i remember specifically i told you about this drown proofing you jump in and you had to tie your boots around your neck and throw them like this and then take your your pants your cargo pants off and fill them up with air and do all that stuff the baits would float so you're like they're like by your head <laughs> like this you're in the field they're like that's crap man whatever but then they would just you, you know you got to be smart about it too it'd stop injuring people like itb and all those mm -hmm. other injuries that were just putting dudes down because they're like running on a just piece of plywood. overuse yeah. injuries yeah so i was glad to see it and, and uh and that's by my biggest concern like we talked about earlier was the the composition of the boot rubber if it's going to be a desert boot that mm -hmm. means rock and sand and sure. it better hold up so yep. i'm going to do that same five mile run that i did with uh with those other boots on um with these and i think yeah. they're going to be a better result you know not quite as aggressive on the tread and all that stuff but as far yeah. as holding together yeah i mean elements. yeah i've uh when you wear boots all the time like yeah. most of us do at, at this point uh you do have that kind of thing like parker talked about of you get home and you're like, you want to take them off. I forget to take them off. Yeah, yeah. That's how comfortable they are. And like, I've, I've been at 1030 at night, out on my back, uh, you know, back deck watching the sun go down and realize I never took my boots off. Yeah. That's how comfortable they are. They're crazy comfortable. One thing that I, I told you before we started is like that uh, on the website, they talk about if you're going to go out and do something really, they're like, hey, for everyday use, just get your size. They're pretty much true to size. Mm -hmm. If you're going to do something super awesome, I think he says, get a half size bigger. And I'm like, that's kind of silly. My foot's going to be whatever. At the end of the day, like we're teaching in these, they're fantastic. We're doing it, moving mm -hmm. and shooting and doing this kind of stuff. By the end of the day, not like I had a pack on or went hiking. It's just the end of the day. And I don't know if your foot is widening out. I'm like, I wish I would have listened. Mm. So on these, I did go a half size up. Yeah. So I would recommend if people are going to do that and wear them all day, every day, end of the day, or they're going to do any kind of trekking, or they're going to put any weight on to absolutely do that. Mm -hmm. So I guess those guys kind of figured it out. Well, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we rock for a living. That's yeah, like yeah. said. we said many times. When you do something for a living, you kind of learn stuff. You do. Yeah. You do. It kind of makes sense. Uh, you know, like if you take like a measurement of your foot in the morning, it's smaller. Right. By the end of the day, where you've been standing up, all that blood's down there and doesn't come back up, heat and swell and everything, that's usually a, bit, a little bit bigger. Like, I noticed my boots fit really tight at the end of the day, yeah, yeah. and trying to get them back in, if you took them off, like, get home, take them off, and then you put them back on to go back outside, it's a little bit more difficult to put them in. So yeah. half size bigger, that seems... Yeah. Absolutely. Cool, thank you. Uh, I want to talk about these, uh, you know, we got, we got a couple 22 options. So right now, this is the second time in recent history where we are running low on ammunition. So yep. this town, like this whole South Denver area, uh, and probably the rest of the nation, you'll get a resupply, that gets sucked up and is gone, whether it's training, whether it's you know stocking up your Armageddon ammo and all that kind of stuff. Um, man, I don't know how many people have contacted me, us, and me specifically, about the whole, you know, another one yesterday. Uh, I feel like my country is being, the country that I love is being dismantled in front of my face, you know? 
what should we be doing right now? You know, I just posted like, for the first time in a while about this stuff on my personal page, uh, a cool thing that uh, Mike, he is no Mike, a uh, buddy of mine that I used to work for, uh, just a great, great guy. Uh, he doesn't send much, but when he does, it's very profound, you know? And it was this thing, did you see it? I did. It was, uh, you know, I read through it. It was like, it's just this. It's just prayer. It's just school. It's just a bar. It's just, the, and then basically, it's, it's just our freedoms. And once we lose them, we're going to be hard to get back. That kind of thing. And I was just like, man, that is amazing. So I, I posted it. Uh, but I, I think that's exactly right. I don't want to come out with my reactionary. Uh, I learned this from a guy, uh, the sage. <laughs> he was like, uh, yeah, hold on, just a nice send out an email today. I was like, maybe I should have waited a little bit, whatever. But um, that one was powerful. I was like, that needs to go out right now because people need to see that because we always think about that, that, that um, you know, you've heard the analogy, you know, you throw uh, uh, a frog into boiling water, he's going to hop out, you put him in a pot, bring it up to a boil, frog soup or whatever. That, that's happening right now. This is changing and people aren't sure what they're going to be doing. So there, there's this thing creeping up in the back of their head about protecting their family, about the, the, you know, the, the nation I love, about everything that I believed in. You know, it is getting attacked, getting pulled away, prayer, school, this, that, whatever. Um, it's amazing. And we said before, I think it was last week, if you can attach any agenda you have right now to COVID, it can probably advance right now. It doesn't have to be true. You know, so that even this, uh, you know, we're talking about vaccines, we're talking about schools, we're talking about chips. And it's just like a credit card. No, it's not. You know, all this stuff. It's tracking for medical reasons. Is it? You know, all of that stuff is really, really coming to the forefront. And I'm trying to find a solid leader that I can support uh, on that front. Now, I know we're leading in a certain area, but there's another area of this fight that I don't want to go quickly to bring it on, all that stuff. But there's a way to fight back, uh, you know, intelligently. Mm -hmm. um, Anyways, that'll be for another podcast. We already talked about bringing that up. But for right now, um, let's, let's talk about like with, with some of the stuff, you know, with, with training, with even the, the defense round, like the, the, the 22 is a survivalist round. You know, a lot of people are like, what? Why are you talking? Months ago, we were saying we need to buy 22, like a ton of it. Like we're ordering pallets, that kind of thing. Um, and, and why is that? So do you guys understand that whole concept of the currency? Mm -hmm. what's, what's the thought process behind that? Well, so, I mean... Are we talking about like for training purposes or just for survival? Yeah, survival I mean, yeah. like a 22, like you might be just hunting f for survival and it'll take down anything but big game. You might, you like for, in terms of just use of it, it's fantastic. Yeah. It's quiet. You can carry a lot of it. There's a lot, there's a lot of use for that. Um, and then you mentioned currency. I mean, like things get really bad. You like it's, you're talking about barter stuff. Wouldn't, it's not bad to have thousands of rounds of 22. <laughs> right. Well, and you're dying with five gold coins in your pocket. You yeah, know right. what I mean? You can't right. eat it. You, you know, can't eat like that. This, this can feed you. So now all of a sudden it becomes trade you this for this kind of thing. This is literally life. It's like mm -hmm. it can be self-defense. It could be feed, feed your family. It could be whatever. Then you take it a step further and say suppress 22. So you go subsonic with 22 rounds and now you're not telling the world here I am. So if mm -hmm. you're trying to basically not be noticed day, night, whatever, and you can still have that same capability, but now without that announcement, you know, like uh, here I am, here I am, that kind of thing. So, uh, so we had a couple options of that. Does everybody here own a 22? Thank him. Got yes. 22? I do. Okay, cool. Yep. So, uh, some guys own, I know 10 Ruger 10 22 was a big one forever. That's kind of yep. like the workhorse F-150 of the whole, you know, uh, 22, uh, realm. And then the pistol until recently, I haven't owned a 22 pistol. I grew up, you know, my grandpa had like the Ruger mark, uh, what, maybe the two. Yeah. What's that? Yeah. Like actually a handgun. Um, so now the Glock 44 has been kind of our backup. So we are stocking up right now to just plan for that. You know, what if we are down to 22s in training? You know, we were in a training company, obviously. So we gotta have a backup plan. So the fact that the Glock 44 is the shape of a Glock 19 and will go into our gear without any modifications is a big deal. Now we can run through for what, four cents a shot? Yeah, four or Something five like cents. Yeah. Four or five cents a shot as opposed to whatever nine mil is going for right now. I heard uh, upwards of 40% the other day. 40% rise? Or, uh, 40 cents. 40, 40, 40 cents. cents a round. Wow. Okay, yeah. So that's. that's and I don't, I don't think that's a norm, right? I think that's probably like a higher end yeah, uh, but, nine mil, but you, you couldn't find nine mil for over 20 cents two yeah. or three months ago. And it's like whatever the price is. That's right now. Next week, it might be you can't buy it. You know, sure. you can't get it. I know it's restrictions right up here at the club. Where was it? Three boxes, two boxes? Three boxes like per person. Per person per visit. Two mm -hmm. today. Is it two? Yep. So now it's down to two. So that's so it's getting smaller. Watch it, and it's the second time. So that's cool when you get the resupply and it comes in. Hey, yay, we're all good again. See, the economy's... Wait and a it's gone. When I say, when's the next one coming? I have no idea. Yep. I have no idea. Like, what if you're going to sit in six months? Like, oh, okay. So we'll, just, we'll keep an eye on that. But a couple options here. One of them is the Tipman, and that is the, the, the uh, paintball company that came out and created an AR chambered in 22. Now, one of the things on this, and I want to show that you can see. It's up. 
that there is a uh, our, our version of a range flag and it is a zip tie just to show that we cleared it beforehand uh, this does have both of these have a GSL Woodland uh, 22 can on them so do not think that you can put uh, you know this one's a 22 only this is a 556 we converted to 22 I'll talk about that in just just a second you can't fire the 556 through that can or you're gonna blow it up okay so no that much <laughs> pressure running through that little can is not gonna happen subsonic 22 it's awesome I literally had some uh, kids and some ladies and some people some neighbors and all that that wanted to learn about some uh, some of these systems and I had the 22 subsonic no ear pro they came in and were just just having a ball with it because you can learn all the components aiming marksmanship all the seven fundamentals marksmanship going for safety and all that without a really lead bang and now they don't have ear pro so they can understand it's not as muffled the instructions are clear so it's, it's a very safe option so this one uh the one of the benefits of these that stand out is i can lock this bolt back so i can basically use sorry parker a little close to you there and lock the bolt back so lock it back you know with the with the uh the bolt stop and then push it back forward by smacking it on the top side of that so that's one of the benefits that this one won't do so this one uh has the magazine put this back in here again made chambered in 22. one of the cool things about it or several cool things about it dang it stick it 22. a little tiny yeah put that guy on there and i'll freak out that guy that's driving by cool now i set it down cool is the magazine the way that they did the magazine is they have a little um you push a button to release the outer sleeve and when you pull the sleeve open like this like a lot of 22s they have the little helper spring those little tiny rounds when you set them in there you got to drop them exactly into the feed lips and then back so it's, it's not like forward and back you gotta drop it straight down then push back pull down with your thumb and just keep going i think it's the 25 rounds but then when you push this back forward you basically send that button back this way the outside of the mag becomes just like a magazine you know in our 556 stuff so this could go upside down in our gear in your mag pouches a little bit of weight to it not bad uh not gonna be as heavy as a loaded mag but now just like you trained pulling that thing loading it into that uh that firearm and then getting after it so that's one option Tipman, i've heard some you know uh, we were, we're firing both of these here at the shop to just see what you know basically how they hold up how they handle that stuff it's a riot it's a blast to shoot it's a lot of fun um, i've heard about how they're building is this cast is this whatever some people aren't a big fan of the construction uh but as far as the performance it's been running so far we haven't really put enough through it to to to, to burn it up uh then we go over here to <laughs> BK sneaking in there. We go over here. This is the Bruce Combs gun. You guys know about that. Donated to the program. And this is pretty much the preferred, um, you know, primary of most of us. It's the, the Daniel Defense DD, DDM4V7P. Is that right? Yeah. Yep. Right. Yep. So it does have a law folder on it, so you can pop this thing open. You can use this with the law folder because you're not using the bolt. What it is, I pulled out the bolt and dropped in this 22 conversion bolt. So you slide it right into your own gun, pop it in there, use a different magazine, again, by CMMG, and uh, here's the, uh, the orange follower, and now it's a 22. So now it's gonna shoot the little 22 long rifles. Again, we have the, uh, you know, the, uh, the suppressor on it, the GSL uh, Woodland, and uh, now it is a truly your gun and you drop the bolt in it. Now we have had a little bit of issues with accuracy. Now you shot that yep, yep. and it wasn't holding like the patterns and Parker just said the same thing. The patterns he's used to, this tight 5.56 five, and all that stuff, the twist rate isn't uh, optimal for the, the 22. I think you were right. A 111 twist I think is ideal for yeah. a long rifle. These are 107. Like yeah. So it does have uh, what we did is for an insurance policy we went out and bought like uh, at least like 9 or 10 of these. Uh, so now if we can't get 5.56 five, people are going to come in and drop this right into their firearm switch out the mags, safety check everything and then they're still going to continue to train. So we have outdoor events where we're pinging steel. We can still do these all with 22 and we can also offer when we get all subsonic rounds no ear pro. So now you're not running ear pro you're hearing the commands of your buddies and you're running and pinging steel so it's something cool about not a not huge a loud bang yeah. and that really hearing that steel uh down range yeah. uh, on your hip putting a glock 44 yeah a little more snap and bang and all that stuff but as far as running in and out of cars and doing all that stuff we can ping steel for again a nickel a, a nickel yeah, bang. Really cheap. so that's pretty cool one of the downfalls of this one that we weren't a big fan of is that um on this one in particular when you go to lock the slide back the 
magazine will walk, I'm sorry, the bolt, lock the bolt back. But then when you go to pull it out, and I don't know if you'll see that, it's actually the follower that's holding it back. So as soon as you pull it back, you can't lock back the bolt. So not a huge deal for a beginner shooter, like uh, Skip pointed out, that might be a point of contention, point of confusion, like why is this doing this? Uh, but for most shooters at the, at the level that would be doing a special event, oh, they're yeah. gonna understand it, put a mag in, rack it, and then be right back in business. Yep. Yeah, and, and the, the big thing is like, uh, the, the, I think the biggest the biggest positive with this is that it's actually the shooter's gun. Yeah. Like it's it's the shooter's gun. It feels exactly the same because it is exactly the same. And that but you can just do it for a thank you. very little money or B that's all you can get. That's right. You know, like like if 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 I don't think that I'm not even for a while there they were out of 556 five, up there. Yeah. They have no no 556 five, five, 223 at all in the building. Yeah. And That's most people we know have 10,000 rounds of 22 long rifle in their basement anyway. You know what right, I mean? So true. if you've got that much and you don't have a 22 or you got a, a Ruger 1022 that you didn't train much much, you just shoot it, shot it rabbits and Coors Light cans out by the river. And now all of a sudden, you know, you're in that kind of situation. It is, like I said, it's still a lethal round. People are like, well, stopping power and you can't kill. Man, you shoot and get shot with a 22, you know, and, and, and most people were talking about in suburbia anyway, you know, it's not like some dude, like you're talking about Mogadishu hopped up on cot, you know, and running yeah. after you. It's it's the dude over there that's lost his mind and whatever. And Wants you, what you hit have. with a rock, you know, he's gonna lay down and cry about it for a while. But anyways, uh, not to mention, bullet enters your round and you get a problem why because there's no hospital like you're, you're dead you don't even know it yet you know yep. so just being careful about that uh to have uh obviously ample uh, ammunition then then having we've been uh, contemplating getting full uppers because now you can actually sight in because it is a different sight in so if you put them out an optic i would go with like probably a three or four power you know uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh not not super expensive i don't know trijicon those are uh, the small acogs something like that where you get a little bit of magnification and then you get some kind of bdc in there so if you can exactly know we were talking about if you're shooting a squirrel you know and you got to be pretty exact because they're small a rabbit same thing or a deer in the eye you know you want to mm -hmm. shoot a bigger thing and, and actually put it down you can't go missing higher yep. low a little bit so to have that marked off and understand what you're shooting so so a couple options. That drop-in bolt looks like this. It's just a rubber protector. But you can see the front of it is, is it's, it's, it's created like a shell casing because that fits right into the chamber. So it's going to set into the chamber, not move. doesn't matter if that, tack, that law folder's on there because when you fire it, it's just a spring action. So when this thing goes back and forth, it just rocks inside there and the spring's inside here. I can't even sure how it is right here. So when you're shooting that spring action, just goes like this inside and it doesn't even mess with the buffer tube. So you don't yeah. have to worry about that. Yeah, cool. they're, they're neat. It's very well engineered. Yeah, really CMMG well is a pretty out. good company. I'd like to get the uppers, get a, you know, get some kind of, and then just pull two pins and convert the entire gun. One thing we talked about when we were looking at it, Parker, is we were looking, I know the H and K and all these other ones, is having your wife get the exact same AR as you, have her have the converted upper dropped in. And now what you end up with is an entire parts kit for your gun. And then basically, if you needed that option because it was a silent subsonic 22, have her take the shot or, hey, switch out real quick. Let me see that thing. Whatever. Because you get 400 rounds in your cargo pocket. You know what I mean? That's yeah. that's not the case with the 5.56 five, rounds. Sorry. It's, I was just going to say the exact same thing. And then you're carrying more rounds. That's right. You got a parts kit. You're carrying more rounds of that 22 if you're doing long hauls. If you've got to go up for get something to eat, you got to go long distance to get that and then bring it back you're not carrying extra hundreds of pounds of, of ammunition that you yeah. can with a 22 you know those little itty bitty nalgene bottles fit like 500 rounds and it's pretty easy to put inside a backpack for a cup or like and a bottle bottle holder yep. yep cool good point what else we got uh this guy go all right so uh that we, we constantly i think jimmy more than any one of us has been looking for uh, a knife like one of the perfect <laughs> knives or what we would have like to carry with you every day. There's all kinds of cool knives. I mean, I've got knives that I've made, uh, knives that I like that just hang around and for different purposes. But as far as a knife that you have on you every single day, the, before this one, I don't remember exactly what it was called, but this is a Leatherman Free KT or Free K2. It is, there's two versions of this one. They're th both 3.3 inch blades. The, the black version is gonna be a, a straight blade and then the silver version is gonna have a partially serrated blade on the back. So personal preference or whichever one you want, you can go with one of those. Uh, between all the tools that are on it and the knife, it has the same opening and closing capability with a, with a lock system. This knife is designed around being able to be used single-handedly. So we have a, you know, we can, we can flip out the knife, open, and it'll open with one hand. You can close it with one hand. You don't have to use two hands. You can also use the, the designed, you know, thumb hook. On the back of it, it's got the most used tools. So a flathead 
and a Phillips head. So typically what you have is, you know, fixing kids' toys or, you know, we fixed all the benches that used to be here, pull yeah. them out at the end of class and sights. tighten them sights. up. Sights with that flat head. Uh, it's all able to use thumb push, it opens up, and then you can manipulate it with one hand to get what you need out of it. Uh, the Phillips works pretty good. There's a bottle opener. As you can see, I kind of don't even use that one. but Which uh, works great, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've used it many times. I just tested that one out. Uh, a flathead, and then it's got like a leather punch that I don't really use for leather punch. I could kind of do without that one. That's kind of the one thing that I don't really use much at all. I'd like it just to be the Phillips and the flathead, but it's got kind of a semi-sharp blade on it, which works really nice if you're opening kind of like maybe difficult packages uh, or like cardboard packages. So you're not dulling your razor edge on your knife. You can use that one and that's fine. Uh, the other thing that I really, really like about this on the flat head, it's got one kind of dipped half moon side. I don't know if you can see that. And it's got a, a knife on that edge. They call it the package opener. You know, you buy the, whatever you bought, you bought the tool, the Leatherman tool in the package and it's covered in plastic and you use four scissors and chop up a finger trying to get through it. This works really well. To use that piece, you run along the edge and it just peels it right open. And I've used that many times. I really do like that as well. Overall design's pretty good. I wish it was a little bit thinner yeah. as far as with where the tools are, so it wasn't as uh, as many tools. So if you took out that center leather punch, then it would shorten it just a little bit, maybe a little bit thinner on the flat head, maybe a little bit thinner on the Phillips head. Kind of shrink it down a little bit because of the way it goes in the pocket. It's more towards the front where the wide part is where I actually want the wider part towards the back of my pocket just to kind of keep where I have everything in my pockets. Overall, I've been pretty happy with it. I've switched over to this one uh, a few months ago when, we, when you first found it, uh, Jimmy, and then uh, I've been carrying it every day since and it's been kind of a, an overall rounded, good tool to have in your, in your everyday carry. Yeah, I didn't want to go with the, um, you know, once you add pliers, and pliers, there's always a need for pliers. I can I got pliers in my truck and all that stuff, but I don't use them every day. I would say I use it all nearly every day. I'm using, like I said, the kids' toys battery, that little mm -hmm. screw so the batteries don't fall and kill them when they swallow it or whatever. So I think it's got a little tiny screw on there, and that's a medium-sized screwdriver that will get in there and do that. Sights every day, we're messing with sights with that flathead. I agree, that little punch, the all, the little tiny screwdriver. Though it's handy, I feel like it's thicker than it needs to be. If this was a little bit thinner, we be pretty much done yep one of the things i was looking for when we got these was a uh, you know um i know there's the automatics in colorado or illegal and all that kind of stuff but to be able to flip that thing open and when there's not a microphone in front of you to pop it open without pushing anything and then not have your thumb in the way when you go to uh, pull that thing closed you know i'll be looking at something not even look at it smack that thing open use it and then put it back away right in your pocket one-handed i know that uh some friends of ours have like a one is like a, a dagger uh, type deal, um, you know, Carl was showing me. Great idea getting it out because you don't have to open it at all. Try putting it back without cutting your pants off. You know yeah, I mean, right. it's just that's hard to do, whatever. So, more so, and a long enough blade to be actually defensive in yep. nature. You know, if you had a, an animal or a human being or whatever, the, the last one we had, I forget what it was. Do you remember that? Two and a half remember. inches or something. It was like a really tiny small. blade, but it had the same concept, was thinner, but the little tiny blade on it yeah. wasn't, wasn't working out. So, this is a 3.3 inch blade and also Leatherman 25 year warranty. Sweet. Sweet. So, sweet. it doesn't cover, you know, wear and tear or loss or theft, but it does cover damage. So, if you use the knife and it snaps in half, they'll send you a new one or fix it for you. So that's kind of nice too. If they're not there, it's a, talking about what we're talking about here, then it doesn't really matter. <laughs> but it's been pretty good with that. Cool. All right, Peyton, what else? Uh, not, uh, did you have anything? I'm totally outflanked and outmaneuvered by these people. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be He's embarrassed like, to bring my paltry stuff to the table. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, what I have is a phone. I'm filling my Amazon gift box right now. <laughs> shopping cart. All right. Uh, Skip, what else you got? I know you got another. Uh, I got one more. Uh, so yeah, so I think I think the probably the, one of the coolest gifts you can ever be given <laughs> by somebody yeah. is something that you would never buy yourself. Yeah. Like that, like that, there's something really special about that. And so I was just uh, lucky enough that uh, somebody gave me a uh, a custom hat from Rand's Custom Hatters in Billings, B Montana. Billings, Montana, and. Uh, I can't even put it on because my headphones, it stinks. Oh, pull them off. I'll pull them off. off. It's worth it. Because it's, it's a good look. It's a good look. So, yeah, that's, that's, that's a that, handsome man. That is, that is mine. I get a picture of that, BK. <laughs> There's only like five cameras going on. Yeah, that's right. Now. That's right. So but make sure you get to a pull picture. out with a cell phone. Get, get, get out of your pocket. Get no, but what, so, one of the cool yeah, things yeah. about it was you got to be, you were able to, I was able to call, I called in, and you can either show up there and, and, and they'll do, they'll like fit you for your hat. And then. And you design it so they, they give you all the parameters and it's really cool. And then they, you, so what I did, I didn't go up there. I, 
uh, I wasn't patient enough because it are because 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 uh, it, it takes it, I think it took a little over five months to get it because they make wow. it for you right so they so that so they um, so you measure your head they set it up and 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 you design the hat they have a bunch of different hats on their website and you're like you know and and so I actually took took a picture of a hat that I already had sent it to the lady that you know I was on the phone with and she's and she's like do you have a hat cabo hat you like and I said well I do she's like well send me a picture so I sent it up to her and she's like do you want us to do that one and I'm like kind of and so we talked about it a little bit they're so knowledgeable and so uh yeah so I, I ordered the, the hat and um and it was five months later and it, it comes in this huge hat box it's so cool <laughs> and, and and you cut it out and uh, I'm like how are you going to get it to me without getting crushed it's the mail or you know it was UPS but uh and it fits totally different well, she's in Montana she's like son yeah. We've been doing this since 1973. 1973. We've been doing this for a while. <laughs> and uh, no, but it's 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 a totally different thing because it fits your head perfectly. And um, and so like uh, I've been outside crazy windstorms and hard hard rain and I never lose my hat and everyone's hats going all over the place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? So uh, yeah, so it's it's a, a amazing it was an amazing uh, gift and uh, thank you Jimmy Graham. Oh, a- and um but it was, but I've, it's so, so cool. Uh, the, it's just cool because it's unique to you. Like the inside, you can't see it, but uh, it says uh, custom hat for Skip Miller. Really? <laughs> yeah, so yeah, so it's got That's the, so awesome. I didn't know that. So, yeah, so, so it's like, oh, it's, it's, oh, cool. It's, it's, it's in the hat band. Gold, yeah, yeah, in the gold. Yeah, in the gold. But yeah, but it just, it fits totally different than any hat I've ever had. So, That's so awesome. And I've been, and I've been, you know, I'm outside all the time. Uh, if I'm not teaching here, I'm outside. And it's been through crazy weather storms already in just a couple months and uh, just fits so well. Skip, I always wondered how those guys in the movies. Had a full gallop, never lost their Never had. Now, <laughs> now, now you know. know. Now you know. Now you know. Now you know. Yeah, it's really cool. Yeah. No. Yeah, it's cool. But Either A, it was all CG and they weren't on a horse, correct. or B, they were at Rams. They were custom they were battery in Billings, that. Montana. That's right. So I didn't even know this was a thing. Shay Miles, if you're listening, thank you, sir. I remember him telling me years ago about it's like, hey, one time in your life, get a custom hat. He goes, and he told me, I, I, Beaver, right? Beaver. They're all made out of beaver. Yeah. And it's 10x. There's a different. There's different x's for the quality. Yep. The higher so the, t- the the higher, higher the, the x, number, higher, higher the, the number, quality. the better the quality. Yeah. So like you know, like I've, I've got a 5x at the house that you buy at the store, whatever. And then you can go in this whole thing where you steam them, and it fits your head yeah. only because you're. It's not a perfect whatever that shape yeah, is of a head. Yeah. Everybody's is different, and I was like, really, and that just stuck in my mind. So we're gonna go up and do ours in Billings. Yep. Someday we're talking to Darren about flying up there and getting them all fitted and all that kind of stuff. But that's gonna be. Uh, awesome. So I can't wait to do that. Yeah. So me too. I think the best thing about one of the best things, not the best thing, but one of the cool things about the gift is it's what you get with the gift. The, the gift little, card. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. open this thing up. So we open this thing up and there's this itty bitty little, little tiny <laughs> white cowboy hat with, with a uh, lace around it and everything's like, well, that's cool. That's like and then friend. you see, I'm like, <laughs> okay. But then you Thank see you. what's underneath of it and you're just like, just stop for words just yeah, completely yeah. speechless well, on what was that the hat, was. was the hat box the actual gift card the gift card yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. so yeah. like it was a hat that, what Skip got his actual hat in it was just a miniature version yeah, of that so it was version. like you know it got shrunk down a little tiny version open it up on the back of it it said you know you know, to yeah. Skip from Jimmy to Barker from Jimmy uh, and then this this and this and then you see a hat and you're like oh Oh, wait, oh, wait, this is, this no, no, real this, isn't, this, real this is a thing. This commitment, like, yeah. and huh. They could have been cooler, too. I called up there and talked to them and figured yeah. it all out, and they were just, and that's the deal. Like, Montana, it's just a different world, you know yeah. what I mean? And this is just, has nothing to do with like this, but it depends on, you know, I just got to pick up. We're going to do a, coming soon, this is our teaser, BK, is going to be a deal on the Colorado BDR. The Colorado BDR is a backcountry discovery route. So we're going to go do this motorcycle ride next month. You're going to get uh, updates on the whole thing. We're gonna, motorcycle guys have found like the best route through Colorado via m- minus pavement. So all these rugged terrails, all that kind of stuff. So I'm going up there to pick up this uh, truck, a Tundra. It's a short box, regular cab uh, Tundra. So the wheels be closer. I'm going to lift it and get it all ready. Me and my son are going to live in it and whatever, do the whole thing, support the crew. I go to Pennsylvania. I call this guy in Pennsylvania. He's supposed to hold one. It's at a used car dealership. We talk about it. We lock in a price. Veterans discount the whole thing. And then he stops return my phone. I'm buying tickets. Like, I'm ready to f- get on a plane and fly out. There's name's Harry. Harry, 
you just you better not find out where you live. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but I, I, nothing. So I'm like, hey, man, I just need to know when to fly in and how we're going to do this thing on a weekend or whatever. And uh, I call back and it's just, I go, can I talk to a manager? What, what do you need? And it was another sales. Oh, that sold this morning. So I don't think somebody that didn't mm-hmm. need a military discount, he made the sale right before I got on the plane. So I'm glad I didn't buy the tickets. I call a guy, uh, I reach out to my buddy, you know, Vince, Dylan, his buddy, uh, man, I can't remember his name, uh, but he, uh, Kemet, I think it is. Anyways, yeah, yep. he's like, hey, can you find me a truck while I'm up there for 4th of July? The next day, hey, here's one in Helena. So I end up going up there. I call the guy, this is kind of what I'm looking for, make him an offer. He goes, if we can settle on this, you know, this price, I'll hold it for a week. You know, different whole, you know, like, are, you, are you sure? Yeah, yeah, man, I'll see, don't worry about it, man. Enjoy time with your family, I'll see you up there. Nothing. I go out there, drive up four hours from Laurel, and catch up with a buddy in Bozeman. He takes me up to Helena, just transaction the park a lot. Hey, brother, whatever, and then out of there. And I, you know, I'm, it, he sold it through Marketplace on Facebook. Okay. To Elk Hunter, just just a man. You know what I mean? I'm like, you know, whatever. So, good job, Kyle, uh, I, I, Harry. We got to talk. <laughs> Pennsylvania. Sorry, you were born in Pennsylvania. Whatever. I credit you. Whatever. Okay. So, the last one. Uh, I'm gonna. Um, so. Because of that, and I just, BK, you're awesome. Thank you. Thank you for being BK. So yesterday it's 100 degrees, right? It's Denver's 100 degrees by 90 something here. And I've got classes and all that. And he goes, hey man, do you want me to come put in that decked system? And I'm like, bro, he's like, I watched the video. I got this, man. I can do this. Like, <laughs> That's true. I got to teach and then I got to do this. And I do that. He goes, no, no, you just, just, just go do your thing. He shows up with a tool bag and spends two hours in the back of that hot truck. Yep. He's pouring sweat. I'm like, ah, can I, I, I got to teach him sign. No, no, I got this. I got this. And I come back out and the thing's done. It is an amazing system. So we're going to walk over and check it out right now. Come with me. You got to take a look at your handiwork, brother. I left it right. Let me shut it off real quick. So up in Montana, <clears throat> found a short box regular cab to keep the wheelbase nice and small. Got a little. And then, this is called a decked system. It's basically a deck drawer system uh, for trucks. Uh, really good quality so my buddy bk like i said it's been two hours in this uh colorado heat installing this thing uh, i did watch the video we were talking about it beforehand it looked like a you know uh this the system made sense very time consuming as bk will attest but basically these are good solid handles they pop open and unlock so that's like same as locks it, it, it uh, latches shut and then it's got a lock that i can key lock it as well so i got a pack in here this is my day pack this is my attack pack uh pack that i carry kind of a get home bag. I just threw a couple things that I don't have it set up quite yet. These drawers go all the way back to here. So they are the pretty much the full length. It's about six and a half feet of storage. This is less than half of it right here. This system right here <clears throat> is that one that I use. That this is the kidney belt. I put this on, pistol can go in it, mag pouches or mag uh, pouches for the mags. The reason they're not in there is because I also use it for that daddy, that daddy boot camp. When I work out with my kids, when I put this pack on, I put this pack on when I chunk it in there this blade fits right into the back of that system so it goes right in the back of this envelope and bears the weight so now like your weight belt your uh, waist belt is supposed to hold all that uh, weight this is running probably about 20 some pounds right now because I got a bunch of water and I'll show you real quick how to set up is from here I unbuckle those the top straps and the three straps they have these they call bison bags they fold out this way and that's my water bladder in there for weight so i fill that up there and let it hang there these encompass it for water weight weight well you know one because i can bring water with but i was trying to get it to be 20 plus pounds so i just filled it up with water i was in here some bivy sacks i think a uh, i've got some cook stoves i got all this stuff so i this really is the pack like the get me home kind of pack so i've got that in there on this side i believe i have her locked so i get the latches in here unlock it pop this side or maybe it, maybe it wasn't there we go just right now my toolkit I've got an inverter I've got a Colorado map a compass this is one of those uh, frog tog they uh, they it's a poncho that really scrunches down really nice and small bowfang radios we've already talked about those I do have a vehicle mount radio that I mount in here and then some stuff back there we don't need to talk about what's in there so and there I got some other contingency stuff in the very back the system like I said, it latches up really good. This guy's a little bit tall. Oh yeah, and then you uh, you put in these um, uh, rail systems, these little push button rail. 
So when you put these guys in the little tie downs, uh, this is into plastic and they even say so on the website, you know, yeah, you got about five, six screws that are embedded into plastic. So I wouldn't go wrenching down on like an ATV or a dirt bike or something like that. But on the way here, I just picked up some wheels uh, off a of Tundra that I'm gonna basically uh, throw some big tires on and lift this thing up and get it all ready for our trip, our upcoming trip that we'll, uh, we'll talk about later. Uh, but this is gonna tie down my kid's little, my son's little electric dirt bike. So you push this button, push that inside that hole and it goes between there. And then tying that thing down, it'll cinch down that little electric dirt bike, uh, no problem. Um, we are gonna lift up the, the tie downs that were here a little bit higher so we'll actually have those. Uh, we're gonna sleep in this thing for about seven days, then the, the, the topper's gonna come off and I'll actually drive it as a pickup truck so I can still put up to 2,000 pounds on that deck. So that's the deck system. I'm super excited about it. Even with this uh, Tundra, it's got a lot, like 18 inches of space back behind the seats. That's more than most regular cab pickups, but that gives me that short wheelbase. Some, you know, my backpack, uh, long guns and all that could go behind the seat, but then it gives me all this storage in the back and it still gives me, leaves me with a pickup. That's it, super excited. Again, BK, thank you, brother. You're amazing. So thanks for letting us do that. Oh, he's pointing at this uh, deck system. We're gonna remove this plate. He's gonna flip it. Let's pull it out of there, okay. Just a second. We're gonna flip that over and have the Able Shepherd sticker right, right there. So we're gonna flip it around. This is a bottle opener. If you can't get to your uh, your beer, then you got some problems. So I don't know if I need that or not, but we'll, we'll try her out. We'll have to uh, test her out and they'll put the Able Shepherd crest on there. That's it, thanks BK. Deck system, check them out. It's a cool, uh, cool. they got a cool website. And if you're in this industry, expert voice or experticity, you can save some money on it. So let's head back to the table. <laughs> Okay, so that thing is... Because, like, that was not the plan. <laughs> no, no. Like, no, okay. Anyways, that thing is absolutely awesome. Me and my son are going to sleep on top of that. Flat, it flattens out the bed. We're going to sleep on top of that for seven days. During the transit, his little electric motorcycle is going to be like, tied into that deal. And then when we get there, I'll pull it out. He'll rip around with a bunch of motorcycle riders that are tired from a long day of travel and all that stuff. And if they have an emergency, BK and his Raptor, Christian and I in the Tundra are going to swipe in there and, uh, and help him out. Or the medevac plan or the recovery plan. Nice. We'll figure it out along the way. And it's, and a, he, it's a drawer system, right? It, That's what, it's, it's a drawer system amazing. for your it, I mean, truck it, bag. It, yeah, when we open it, it's so smooth. <laughs> you know, when you pull that thing open, it's just, it's just, it's just quality product. And yeah. Rachel makes fun of me because I'm like, that's a good design. That's a good design. This is, that's a horrible design. That's a horrible design. And when I see something, I'm like, ooh, she goes, good design. I'm like, shut up, <laughs> whatever. And like, I love this R&D stuff. So anyways, any final words of wisdom, guys, before we shut her down? No, no, that's good. Okay. I don't have anything. Thanks for being here, guys. Uh, let's see. We were going to Good design choice on the wife, by the way. What's up? That's right, man. There you you can't get much better than that, man. She keeps me straight. So, uh, so guys, we're going to go ahead and sign off. Um, we're going to come back on the next couple. One of the two is going to be we're going to be talking about sound of freedom um right american thunder uh we're going to be talking about that bdr the colorado bdr um look at it, it's actually uh that's there's there's many there's 10 of them but we're going to go into that we're going to be with the team talking about the upgrades they're doing to their motorcycles to their trucks and all that kind of stuff to make that trip uh and then we got a couple more cool ideas uh coming up as far as the training and stuff that we offer and keeping people ready probably in the near future another sit rep in current affairs and all that stuff uh, that's going on but until then please give us a five star rating on wherever you're checking out this podcast listen to them tell your friends that's how we grow by getting followers and get the word out um, follow us on Facebook just look us up on Abel Shepherd. Uh, watch the videos of these podcasts at protectorculture.com Perry's over there right over there um, he says that he listens to them and then watches them and they're even better <laughs> so I, I would agree because I watched these. It might be two weeks before I watch it, uh, but it, it's awesome to see everybody hanging out. Uh, let's see what else. Uh, and then learn more about the program. So it's ableshepherd.com, A-B-L-E-S-H-E-P-H-E-R-D.com. Until next time, God bless you guys. God bless you guys. Take care of one another.